Alright, hi everyone and welcome to this video concerning JSON, everything you need to know. So if you're anywhere near programming, if you go on blogs, if you watch tutorials, if you go on Stack Overflow, you've probably seen the word JSON being tossed around here and there. So the reason you're here could be because you want to learn what exactly JSON is, or because you want to actually learn how to use JSON. Well, this is what this video is about. So to get started, what is JSON? JSON, the acronym itself, stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and why that is, we'll get to it in a minute. It was discovered by Douglas Crockford in 2001. Now, we say discovered and not invented, because this sort of syntax or notation, you could say, existed previously in the form of JavaScript objects. So this, is, this was the way for you to write the syntax for objects in JavaScript from way before. So in 2001, Douglas Crockford looked at that and he realized that this syntax or notation can be used for something more. And that's how JSON came to be. So what is this something more? JSON itself is a lightweight data interchange format. Now, what does data interchange mean? So on the web, between client and server, between your browser and the server, data is being exchanged in textual files. What these textual files are is all your data, that's pretty much it. But here's the thing. So us humans, we read text in the form of free text. We read sentences and words following words and words. But machines, however, they need a specific format for them to be able to understand the data content of these textual files. They need to understand how each word is related to the other, not through just a series of string of words. So that's why we need data interchange formats. Previously to JSON, XML existed from the rise of the web until now, and it's still being extensively used to this day. But the thing is, JSON came along in 2001, acting as maybe a, an alternative to XML or perhaps a competitor. So that's pretty much what JSON is. It's important to know that JSON is not a part of JavaScript despite holding the name inside it. So JSON is not related to any programming language. It is in fact not a programming language. So you cannot code JSON to make applications or to write programs. This is not what JSON is for. JSON is for storing the data and transmitting it. That's it. So it's not a language, it's platform independent, meaning you can write programs in pretty much any language ever that can parse JSON and read data from JSON files, but it's not a programming language itself. What makes JSON great? So why is it that this seemingly new format came to be and then everyone started adopting it as either an alternative or a competitor to XML? So we had XML. Why did we decide that we need something else? Here's the reason. JSON is much more lightweight than XML. It's much easier for us to parse and read the data from JSON files than it is from XML files. XML files are more formatted, they're heavier, they're formatted in sort of a tree structure, but this is not what this video is about. So that's all you need to know. It was very lightweight, it's more fast and efficient for programs and web apps to read and parse JSON data that made people want to use it more. And sometimes your data is not complex enough for it to actually require XML. So why is XML still used? That's because some data fits better in the scope of XML format. But if you have pretty straightforward data, then you don't need anything more than lightweight JSON. So that's why JSON was so widely adopted. Another important thing to note that makes JSON so great is the fact that there are so many libraries in pretty much every single language on earth that help you parse and read data from JSON files. In fact, we'll see how we can do that with both JavaScript and Python towards the end of this video, so stay tuned. Now, why should you learn JSON? So you're a coder, you're telling me I'm a coder, I'm an aspiring developer, but why should I learn JSON? So I understand what it is, but how will it help me? So if you want to be a web developer, then it's essential that you learn JSON because you will be dealing with a lot of data on the web. You will be making websites and web apps. And a lot of the time, these apps will have data inside them. And this data could very well be in JSON format. So it's very important for you to learn JSON and understand the way the syntax works and how everything works together. It's used in web services and APIs. So a lot, a lot of the APIs on the web that you will use to add data to your web apps Will, will give you this data in JSON format. So it's essential that you learn how to manipulate it. 
Another thing, JSON is central for popular NoSQL databases such as MongoDB and Firebase. So if you've been anywhere near my channel, you know that I talk about MongoDB and Firebase a lot. I have videos explaining how MongoDB structures its data. I will link that below. I have, video I have a video explaining exactly what NoSQL databases are. Now, why am I saying this right now? This is because MongoDB and Firebase structure their data using JSON format. So you don't have SQL tables here. You have literally JSON format and this is the database so if you want to learn these databases if you're a database person then json is very important especially if you want to go to the no sql route that has been growing in popularity in recent years and finally internet of things this is a very hot topic so you know that in the next 10 20 years so many devices will all be connected to the web from your fridge to your washing machine to your car and these devices will be exchanging data all the time. And this will be done using JSON. So in this data will be exchanged in the JSON format. So if you are into IoT, if you wa want to enter this very hot industry, this very popular industry right now, then you should learn JSON. All right, so enough about why and how JSON. What is JSON? How does it look like? Time to learn it. So this is a sample JSON file. It's from the official json.org website. It's an example with all different sorts of JSON um, objects and values summarized inside it. So let's actually discuss what this is and how does this work. Okay, JSON is essentially made up of key value pairs. You probably know what key value pairs are. So if we go back, we can see that this key glossary, the first key in this example, it's a key with a value, except here the value is a bit complicated. We can see another key value pair. We see title and example glossary. So this is a key and this is its value. The key is always enclosed in double quotes. The value is one of many things. We will discuss it right now. So values can be either an object or a list or array of values. So here, key, title and example glossary. So this example glossary is a value and this value is a string. Meanwhile, right here, we see that for, that for this key value pair, this is an array of values. There are two values in this array and, and they're both, and the array in general is the value for this key, which is gloss C also. Now, JSON objects. So, okay, we said enclosed in curly braces. The key field is, or name field, is enclosed in double quotes. So we already said that, so we can see it right here, double quotes. Key value pairs are comma separated, so an object can have a series of key value pairs, and these key value pairs are separated by commas. So we can see this example, so name one value one, that's one key value pair, then there is another key value pair, and it's comma separated. That's pretty much all you need to know about JSON objects. So JSON values, we said key value pairs, but what is this value? A value can be a string, such as word or a series of characters. So if you know programming, you know what a string is. It can be a number. A number can be a floating point or an integer. It does not matter. It can be an object, which is enclosed in curly braces and it has a series of key value pairs inside it. So if we go back, glossary has an object for its value. And this object has more objects inside it and it's really nested. You can go very nested with JSON, but it's all essentially repeating the same idea. Here, the value is a string. So that's really all you need to know. Next, the value can be an array. So if we go back here, the value here is an array. So that's exactly what we mentioned just before. The value can also be a Boolean, so true or false, and the value can be null. And these are all the possible JSON values you could ever have. Then we have the JSON array. So we said it's enclosed in brackets. It can act as a JSON value for a certain key. Values inside the array can be any type of JSON value. So all the values that we listed here can act as values inside arrays. So right here we have GML, XML. These are strings and they are inside this array, which is the value for glossy also, but they can be anything. They can be objects, more arrays, it depends. So you can go super nested with JSON and that's what you can see here. So if you check all these braces here, you can see how nested we actually want in this example. 
All right, now that you know JSON syntax, you literally just learned JSON syntax, but this is it. Everything else is just nesting and repeating the same things over and over again. So just some examples so you can get an idea of how easy it is to work with JSON these days. So this JavaScript example. So in this JavaScript example, we want to convert the JSON text into a JavaScript object. So it can be manipulated like a JavaScript object. To do so, all we need to do is json.parse and, and within the uh, parentheses, we have to include what the JSON text, the, var the variable for the JSON text. That's pretty much it. Everything else from there is pure JavaScript object manipulation. It's not even related to JSON anymore. So this is the only thing you need to do to turn your JSON into JavaScript object, manipulate it and work with it like a JavaScript object, and then you're done with JSON. You're just flexing your JavaScript skills right now. And then to do it the other way, so you have a JavaScript object, you want to convert it to JSON, you just json.stringify the object, and now you have JSON text. That's it. So everything else is JavaScript, and you only have two functions that will just take you from JSON to JavaScript object. That's it. In Python, meanwhile, we have, if you're familiar, in Python, meanwhile, if you're familiar with Python, you know there is a data structure called dict that exists in Python. It's a dictionary, and it's pretty much identical to JSON syntax. This is it. So you JSON that loads your data into a dictionary, a variable that would be a dictionary. And that's how you convert a string with JSON content into a Python dict. From then on, you manipulate it the same way you would manipulate any Python dictionary, forgetting that it was ever JSON to begin with. So in these examples, both JavaScript and Python, we see that it is pretty straightforward to work with JSON, and it's super built in into these two very central and important and popular languages we have these days. So if you want to get started, it's super easy. If you know Python or JavaScript, you can get started right now. I'm going to upload a video two days from now because I upload every other day and that video will be parsing JSON and manipulating it with Python. So it will be a tutorial. So please subscribe and turn your notifications on if you're interested in watching that and learning exactly how this works in real time. And thank you very much for watching. I really hope it was useful. Please leave a comment letting me know where and when you're going to be using JSON and if you found this useful. Thank you very much.